Y'all don't need nobody to, to lie for his word, but y'all lying for culture, culture, culture. And I'm going to tell y'all another thing about Pastor Kelly. Everybody, listen, when us preachers don't want to ask something, we get to spiritualize in the text. He said, yo, he said, yo, and even when you look at the pictures and in the way that the pictures are, what, what that mean? What that mean? What that mean? Look on the outside edge of the pews. Look on the outside edge of the pews where you are. You see the different markings alongside the edge of the pews? They represent the different tribes that made up our congregation back then and spoke over six different languages among themselves. These were small tribes enslaved by larger tribes and sold to Europeans as they came along the African coast. One of the major languages that they spoke back then was that of Aramaic and also two of Hebrew, which means the writings read from bottom to top. Ashalamu alaikum. Which means, which means, peace be unto you. It's not a Muslim term. It's actually the same greeting which Christ gave into the disciple when he met him in that region. Most countries in that region read from right to left. Here in America, we read from left to right. That's why the pastors in the St. God's window up front here are going in numbers two through seven from the right hand side over to the left, to the left, to the left, to the left. Oh, oh, you got it. Look, there goes Miss Jenkins right there. Mm -hmm. That's good old Mr. Jenkins, honey. I dare somebody say something bad about Ms. Jenkins. <laughs> Don't nobody better say nothing bad about Ms. Jenkins because I'll go crazy. That, that's when I'll lose it. Ms. Jenkins is a sterling example of a human being. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Hey, Ms. Jenkins. <laughs> she is something else, honey. Just don't let her take her shoes off in your apartment. Feet smell like a dill pickle. <laughs> yeah, there's some nice people in this neighborhood. There's some fine folks. You're gonna like it just fine. You just do me a favor. You stay away from nosy, gossiping hens, and you be okay. All right, I got to go now. Home Shop Club's coming on. And because a but lot now, of people know Pastor Brown is my man, they automatically feel I'm involved in some cover-up. I'm not gonna... It's a lot. It's a lot. That's good old Mr. Jenkins, honey. I dare somebody say something bad about Miss Jenkins. <laughs> Don't nobody better say nothing bad about Miss Jenkins because I'll go crazy. That, that's when I'll lose it. Miss <laughs> Jenkins is a sterling example of a human being. Mm, 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 mm. Right now, if you don't produce Richard Katz, if you don't produce him, y'all are liars. And y'all don't want to produce him, it's okay. But if y'all out here be getting tagged and videos talking about your church name and all that, and using it, listen, whatever it is, it's going to be because y'all started that. Y'all brought that out here. Y'all are nothing but liars to me. It's a trip, but I ain't want to gossip. So if anyone asks you, you ain't heard it from me. 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 This is ill. That's why I say I'm sitting back chilling. I ain't and Garfield and Garfield running with the thing. Then I click up five o'clock in the morning. I see Sister Cherry talking pure nonsense. Pure nonsense. Pure nonsense. It's amazing to see the level of foolishness displayed from those who say they are defending Christianity. It's amazing to see the level of deception and ugliness from these so-called Bible thumpers who call themselves urban apologists. There is nothing they would not do to give the impression that they are knowledgeable on any particular subject. As you can see in the previous clip of Brother Berean and Pastor William Brown, their discussion about the emails. Not one time did Brother Berean use any disrespectful words, names, and gestures, which afterwards he put on full public display these past couple of months. Listen carefully to his very disrespectful rhetoric. I tell you what the country wants. Stop messing with the blacks and give us a break on tech. Stop hogging up all the wealth and give us a cut on tell. Stop flying all around and keep your hands down. You don't like that? You can kiss my butt. That's my it's a trip, but I ain't one to gossip. So if anyone asks you, you ain't heard it from me. 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 As you can see, Brother Berean is what I call an internet tough, spacebar strong, keyboard cocky, YouTube gangster, who is nothing more than the urban apologist community version of Sister Bonita But Real. It's a trip, but I ain't one to gossip. So if anyone asks you, you ain't heard it from me. 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 Who is nothing more than the urban apologist community version of Sister Bonita But Real, combined with spazzing out like Luther the Cook in Living Color? I tell you what the country wants. Stop messing with the blacks 
and give us a break on tech. Stop hogging up all the wealth and give us a cut on tell. Stop flying on around and keep your hell down. If you don't like that, you can kiss my butt. That's my advice now. Pick it up. When I was on his live challenging the entire urban apologetic community, he made no attempts to bring his so-called block work in my direction. Yes, sir. Yes, absolutely so. Mm -hmm. am, I, am I right, Brother Barain? Am I right? You did. I, you see me shaking. I can't lie. So I want to say this again, Brother Barain. I really appreciate you for allowing me to do I'm this. Sure you too, brother. But, you can jump on any time. You already know, you know that. Man, you done. You was going good for a minute. He and his entire community is nothing more than a next day, you lucky they hold to be back group who actually is doing nothing more than sock work. All jokes aside, this is a very serious state of affairs among the black community, especially within Christianity, which has over 36,000 denominations. The major religious systems have done a serious work on our community. Before I address the pews, I want to deal with this group of self-appointed Christian apologists. I refer to this group as CARS. The acronym stands for Catholic, Atheist, Racist, Scam Artist. We have the Roman Catholic Abdel Masi Aman Hatani, the Atheist Garfield, the Racist Vocabalone, aka John Mark Rodgers, and of course, the scammer, Brother Barim. Honorable mentions include Bishop Eric Mason, Damon Richardson, I see you lurking, Nefernity, I see you lurking, Elder Mike Holloway, and Mike Pereira, aka Faithful to a God, who is a complete joke. This group I call CARS. Why? Because they are a vehicle driven by confusion. Nothing really surprises me about this group. This entire group is a reflection of how lost and how sick our community is. Before I address a few things, I want to start with briefly explaining herd behavior. Y'all are nothing but liars to me, to me, to me, to me. I'll tell you what the country won't. Stop messing with the blacks and give us a break on tech. Stop hogging up all the wealth and give us a cut on tell. Stop flying on around and keep your hell down. If you don't like that, you can kiss my butt. That's my advice now. Pick it up. It's a trip, but I ain't want to gossip. So if anyone asks you, you ain't heard it from me. 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 What causes her behavior? Her behavior refers to the behavior of groups of individuals who act together without any planning or informed direction. Individuals often follow the group and try to fall in line with the opinion and behavior of the crowd. This human behavior leads to them being compared to the herd behavior of animals. Herd behavior, also called as herd mentality or herd instinct, is a widespread tendency of people to do or behave as the crowd do. What is the origin of herd behavior? The term herd behavior originates from the behavior of animals in herds, groups, and flocks. The herd behavior in animals is predominantly seen when a group of animals flee from a predator. So what is the cause of herd behavior? Individuals become part of a group and resort to herd behavior when they feel they cannot voice their own opinions. In this way, an individual feel more secure by being part of a group as in the case of animals moving in herds as a precaution against predators. The cause of herd behavior may have its roots in the man's social conditioning to mimic the behavior of the herd. By nature, man finds it easy to conform rather than being labeled as a dissenter. Man is mentally conditioned to fall in line with the general opinion of the group which also saves them from the pain of any rejection and doubt. What is the consequences of herd behavior? Herd behavior in humans may be efficient in some ways when some amount of social cohesion can be a 
achieved through group conformity. However, in many cases, hurt behavior may have disastrous consequences when groups can go wrong and the individual tends to lose his or her independence. In the absence of an exchange of individual views and opinions, there is every chance for the group to commit collective blunders. When the herd behavior is spurred by emotions, it can lead to hysterical behaviors as seen in mob violence or violent group demonstrations. 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 Mm, it's a trip, but I ain't want to gossip. So if anyone asks you, you ain't heard it from me. 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 I backed away from the term urban apologetics when I saw how they were doing moderate or who I would call Israel that believed on the law, that believed on the law, that believed on the law, that believed on the law. Everybody sneak around like I told y'all a long time ago. Urban apologists, everybody. They do like your baby mama. They do like they come around in a different screen name, like a stalker. They coming around. In the different name, in the different name, in the different name, in the different name. Mm, it's a trip, but I ain't want to gossip. So if anyone asks you, you ain't heard it from me. 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 Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Judy Ho, and today I want to talk to you about a very interesting diagnosis called Munchausen's and also Munchausen's by proxy. Now in the DSM-5, they're named something else, but everybody has heard of Munchausen's, yet you probably don't know somebody with Munchausen's or Munchausen's by proxy personally because these are very rare illnesses, yet when they happen, they wreak havoc on so many individuals and not only themselves, but also everybody around them who takes care of them and associates with them. So Munchausen's is a type of diagnosis or disorder where the person is presenting themselves to other people as very ill or injured, and sometimes they might even falsify medical records or even impose that injury upon themselves to pass themselves off as a sick person. And the mystery behind this is that there isn't really an external reward that's very evident. The main reward is that they want and seek the attention, but it's not so much that they want the money associated with it. You don't really see them very often in the legal system. They're not trying to get money for their illness. It's more about evoking a sense of care and nurturance from people around them and feeling special in some way. 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 Munchausen syndrome by proxy is a mental health problem in which a caregiver makes up or causes an illness or injury in a person under his or her care, such as a child, an elderly adult, or a person who has a disability. What causes Munchausen syndrome by proxy? Doctors aren't sure what causes it, but it may be linked to problems during the abuser's childhood. Abusers often feel like their life is out of control. They often have poor self-esteem and can't deal with stress or anxiety. The attention that caregivers get from having a sick child may encourage their behavior. Caregivers may get the attention not only from doctors and nurses, but also from others in their community. For example, neighbors may try to help the family in many ways, such as by doing chores, bringing meals, or giving money. Some of you may be wondering, why am I bringing this medical condition to your attention? I had to sit back and really think about the questionable behaviors of the urban apologetic community. They have proven that there is no bottom to how low they are willing to go with their deceptions and dis honesty. They are known for creating dummy accounts and hiding behind them to say and do things you would not think they would do. They, everybody sneak around. Like I told y'all a long time ago, urban apologists, everybody. They do like your baby mama. They do like they come around in a different screen name, like a stalker. They coming around 
in the different name, in the different name, in the different name, in the different name. Mm, it's a trip, but I ain't want to gossip. So if anyone asks you, you ain't heard it from me. 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 Initially, after studying this medical condition, I was going to conclude that it falls in sync with my Pereira, aka faithful to a God's behavior. However, after giving it some thought and analyzing the behaviors of the Roman Catholic Abdel Masi Amanhattani, I am convinced that this condition best describes him. He made an assertive effort to present himself as a victim of simply one to have discussions solely on the pews but his behavior says differently after watching the roman catholic abdel masi amahatani and his interaction with the gms camp which was a complete failure for him because that group completely shut him down you ever heard the term of queen of heaven yeah it's it's in jeremiah but that the church started applying it to her. Yeah, that's true. Right. It's in Jeremiah. Like it was a goddess that I think the. the church church. Church. Oh, no. She went under many names. Yeah. She what do you mean? Under many names. That's Saint Guadalupe. Yeah, I mean, they want to look at That's the church. That's the church. That's the church. You see? Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 No, I think Samaramis is a. Uh, a goddess, a pagan goddess. That's what that is. That's what they tell you. No, 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 all right, when you read, um, what is it, uh, what is that, Ezekiel, Ezekiel. Uh, the eighth chapter tells you about that, how the Israelites were weeping to Tammuz. Right. Now, if a brother got the picture of Tammuz, that make it even better. Huh? Yes, sir. All right? Yes, sir. Yeah. brother got the picture of Tammuz. Look, it's serious. Look, it is but the reason they call them the queen of heaven is because of, uh, yeah, 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 I mean, yeah, obviously yeah, they're not, they're yeah, trying yeah, to separate it, but yeah. the reason is because of Revelation, uh, somewhere in Revelation they talk about a woman who, uh, yeah, like, like this one, she's she's the moon and uh, the stars. Yeah, that's talking about Israel. That's talking about the nation of Israel. That's not talking about Israel. But he says she was the mother of uh, Christ. That's talking about the, matter of fact, let's get that. Right. I think it's the 12th chapter. 12. Yeah, I think it's 12. Revelation 12. Cause in the, it's not talking about, it's not talking yeah, about it's right Mary. Here. All right, like this, Mary. Right, Look, the, same thing, almost. Yeah. I mean, it's a different but, icon. But, but that's not talking about Mary, Mary right? Mary. 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 No, I mean that icon, the icon, icon right. but Mary. <laughs> Revelation 12 and 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet. They ain't talking about Santa. Now Santa, what is that? It's not talking about Mary. All right? Let's talk about the nation of Israel. All right? Go ahead, brother. Read on. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Right, the 12 stars represent, you have 12, uh, you have 12 tribes in the nation of Israel. But I'm saying the 12 stars represent the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. It's all going under the vibration of 12. So that's not talking about an actual woman. That's talking about the nation of Israel, which is known as a calmly woman, all right? Israel is known as a calmly woman. But when you go to a calmly and delicate woman, when you go to Revelation, uh, the 21st chapter, it tells you how the groom is going to marry the woman. The woman is talking about Israel. And the groom is talking about what the world called Jesus Christ, all right? All right, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 6 and 2. Liken the daughter of Zion to a calmly and delicate woman. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a calmly and delicate woman. So the daughter of Zion is talking about the nation of Israel, right? Right. The most high referred to the nation of Israel as a woman. Right. All right, you got something, brother? Got something real quick. Uh, 2 Corinthians 11 and 2. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. This is right. Paul speaking to the nation of Israel that how the nation of Israel got to be married to, to, to the to the Lord. All right? Okay, go ahead. Back in Revelation, Revelation 12. See down there in Mexico, there's a church in Mexico City. Right. You know what these people do? They go from the end of the church and put knee pads on because I was down there and they'll crawl on their knees with their hands like that calling to see the, uh, uh, the Saint Guadalupe. That's all BS, man. That's all BS. Go ahead. Revelation 12 and 2. And she being with child cried travailing in birth. Now the child being, uh, 
being with child prior to veiling and birth is talking about you got that in um, it's in Luke and in Matthews when the Romans went around right when the Romans went around to uh yeah, kill the babies the firstborn babies the newborn babies that's what that's talking about you know you got a lot of joker jokesters out there calling themselves trying to break down scriptures you don't know the scriptures that's right. Before I go on, I want to be clear by stating this. I am not in any way affiliated with GMS or any of the other camps. Also, what triggered my thoughts is how Abu aggressively created and injected the so-called Professor Katz foolishness and at the same time take on the spirit of Sister Benita Butrell. Everybody sneak around. Like I told y'all a long time ago, urban apologists, everybody. They do like your baby mama. They do like they come around in a different screen name. Like a stalker. They coming around in the different name. In the different name. In the different name. In the different name. Mm, it's a trip. But I ain't want to gossip. So if anyone asks you, you ain't heard it from me. 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 <laughs> This is the incident that drew me to the conclusion of the psychological condition the Roman Catholic Abdel Masi Amanhattani as well as the urban apologist suffers from. On February 27th, I posted a newspaper clip on my YouTube channel that was forwarded to me. Little did I know that this clip was a forgery. The last thing I would think is that someone would stoop to such a level of deception knowing it would circulate throughout our community. Everybody sneak around. Like I told y'all a long time ago, urban apologists, everybody. They do like your baby mama. They do like they come around in a different screen name. Like a stalker, they coming around in the different name, in the different name, in the different name, in the different name. Mm, it's a trip, but I ain't want to gossip. So if anyone asks you, you ain't heard it from me. 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 I tell you what the country wants. Stop messing with the blacks. And give us a break on tap. Stop hogging up all the wealth and give us a cut on tap. Stop flying on around and keep your tail down. If you don't like that, you can kiss my butt. That's my advice now. Pick it up. Unfortunately, this forged article did circulate to others as well, and I believe that's the true intentions of the creators of this deceptive clip. See, within an hour of me posting it on my YouTube channel, I received a tag to a video Abu did to mock me titled, Hebrew Israelite, We Woke Now, Fooled by Mem Generator, by way of Mike Pereira, aka Faithful to a God. And now I'm going to go to that page's community tab. And when I do so, there's he has a post which is about roughly an hour old. Roughly an hour old. Roughly an hour old. Roughly an hour old. He has a new post. And, oops. Just going to click on that post. Here we go, sorry about that. So here's the relevant post. Uh, I guess I can try to zoom in and see if we can read this together. A friend of mine shared with me this interesting website. This is the newspaper clipping generator and I'll share a link in the uh, video description. And what this website allows you to do is to make newspaper clippings with only two columns. You only get a portion of the article, but you can put whatever you want. And how did he instantly know to go to a site that I am confident very, very, very few has ever heard of? Is it a coincidence that just so happened that the Roman Catholic Abdel Masi of Manhattani, aka Abu, quickly recognizes the origins of this image? Is it a coincidence that he swoops in and saved the day? Have you noticed it's always someone bringing something to his attention. It was a little birdie that supposedly forwarded the video I did about the pews that was nested among over 180 other videos. It was a little birdie in his ear that supposedly told him about Benaiah Israel's transliteration of one of the pews. It was a little birdie in his ear that gave him the idea that Pastor William Brown allegedly, supposedly, created Professor Richard Katz. It was a little birdie in his ear who told him about the newspaper clipping generator. 
again is this a coincidence is it strictly a coincidence he made it a point in a discussion with Orthodox Moore to say he didn't know the manufactured so-called controversy about Professor Katz would take the discussion away from the pews. Yeah, right. I'm going to show you why he and his entire group manufactured this so-called controversy. He also said the same thing on Brother Berean's channel. Yet, little do you know that he continuously tags me to his videos and as well as the videos of John Mark Reiser, AKA Vocab Malone. I want to make this clear. There is a difference between doing something in error versus purposely being deceptive. Every one of us have posted or made a reference to a poor source not knowingly. Not knowingly. Not knowingly. I backed away from the term urban apologetics when I saw how they were doing moderate or who I would call Israel that believed on the law, that believed on the law, that believed on the law, that believed on the law. Everybody sneak around like I told y'all a long time ago, urban apologists, everybody. They do like your baby mama. They do like they come around in a different screen name, like a stalker. They coming around in the different name, in the different name, in the different name, in the different name. I got a thousand dollars of Israelite money I'm going to put up, put up. It's a trip, but I ain't want to gossip. So if anyone asks you, you ain't heard it from me. 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 And what's really harmful about this is that the individual they're imposing the injury or illness on usually has no idea. They sometimes even believe that this person really does have their best interests at heart. And yet the motivation is the same. The motivation is that it's not really that they're after the money, but that they're after the attention. They want to be seen. One of the really key features of somebody who has Munchausen's or Munchausen's by proxy is that they oftentimes will doctor shop or doctor skip. And this is because over time, some doctors start to figure out something's not quite right. They come in with these illnesses, they don't quite make sense, they get treated at the hospital, they get better, but then a couple days later they come back and either with the same illness or another illness. And oftentimes they love this idea of duping doctors, tricking doctors. So when they see the same doctor or the same group of doctors in a network, usually the doctors start to suspect this and they start to talk to each other about it. I'll tell you what the country wants. Stop messing with the blacks and give us a break on tech. Stop hogging up all the wealth and give us a cut on tell. Stop flying all around and keep your tail down. You don't like that? You can kiss my butt. That's my advice now. Pick it up. Again, the Roman Catholic Abdel Masi Amanhatani, I believe, suffers from Munchausen syndrome. Here's the key to understanding this behavior. Caregivers may get attention not only from doctors and nurses, but also from others in their community. For example, neighbors may try to help the family in many ways, such as by doing chores, bringing meals, or giving money. This person also makes it a point to jump from doctor to doctor in an attempt to cover up their sickness. Notice how the Roman Catholic Abdel Masi Amanhatani suddenly began to jump from platform to platform with the exception of those he knew would catch on to his game. This is why he did not want to have an actual discussion with me, but to communicate through Facebook posts. Maybe he felt underappreciated because everyone else were getting the attention he desired. And finally, after over seven years of trying, he's finally broke the 1000 subscriber mark on his YouTube channel. See, the Roman Catholic Abdel Masi Amanhatani wants to question my discernment for making a simple gap. Now let's question his discernment along with the rest of the entire urban apologetic community's discernment.
What you see on your screen is an actual order of protection issued to one of the men within their group who is battling with their sexuality. A restraining order was put in place due to domestic issues against his boyfriend at that time. Boyfriend at that time. Boyfriend at that time. Boyfriend at that time. Hated it. Hated it. Hated it. The order was filed by the boyfriend and issued by the judge. Who is this person? Why does this group choose to throw stones at others while at the same time individuals within their community is struggling with personal issues like this? I can say emphatically, it is not G-Man. Let me say this again. I can say emphatically, what you see on the screen is not about G-Man. So please leave him alone. Better yet, do not form lynch mobs in search of this person. I want to be clear, this is not a manufactured Professor Katz issue. This is an actual incident that occurred by someone within their group. There are other questionable behaviors within this group that falls in alignment with so many leaders within Christianity that I can publicly expose but choose not to. This is why I warned this entire group about living in glass houses and casting stones at others, especially when they have an entire graveyard in their closet. This is why I challenge the entire UA group to an open discussion to compare my behavior with the behaviors of their entire group. So I just wanted to put that challenge to, uh, out there to you, Brother Barine, and if any of them want to take the challenge, set a date and I'll be here and they bring all their their behaviors and the the, the, the one caveat is the, the requirement that I have that they all have to show their face and use their real names on the point huh? when we have the discussion man you done you was going good for a minute <laughs> I'm not giving them no way out gets the yet unheard of Zorro snap in Z formation Needless to say, they took the cowardly way out and proceeded to make more videos about me. They demonized and continued to mock Pastor William Brown and myself over a wild assumption from no other than the Roman Catholic Abdel Masi Aman Hatani. They demonized Dante, Sister E, Teo Ministry, and others within the Hebrew Israelite community. I've tried and made every attempt to pivot from this wicked group. Yet between the Roman Catholic Abdel Masi Aman Hatani, the racist John Mark Reiser, a AKA Vocab Malone, Mike Pereira, AKA Faithful to Aga, and Brother Berean, they've created over 40 videos about me in attempt to damage my reputation. This is why this protective order isn't surprising to me because they are displaying a high level of obsession of me. That's creepy, that's alarming. That's sick. In the words of my late uncle, Bishop Jerry Carr Jr., this is fruit booty behavior. He would call this entire group a bunch of fruit booties. I am being stalked by this group to the point that the Roman Catholic Abdel Masi Amahatani uploaded a video less than an hour after I made a post to my YouTube channel. Now I'm going to go to that page's community tab. And when I do so, there's he has a post which is about roughly an hour old. R 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 roughly an hour old. To each professor I wrote to, I sent two images. Two images. Two images. The first image I attached was of this particular pew from this angle, from this angle, from this angle, from this angle. The second image I attached to, uh, which I attached to each email, was this one, which is the same pew, just with some highlights added to guide the eyes, so to speak. 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 <laughs> I want to make this clear. You've been had. You've been hustled. Let me say that again. You have been had. You've been 
hustle. I spotted the Ace of Diamonds from the very beginning. I saw it in his so-called manufactured Professor Katz controversial video. You been had. You been hustled. I see the Ace of Diamonds. Before I explain, I want to introduce you to the street hustle called Three Card Monty. At one time, this street hustle was a very deceptive and easy way of making money. The key to this hustle is how to grip the cards and how to do a false toss. Let me explain the hustle. How did you know who he was gonna pick? We told him to. We've been telling him all day. From the moment he left his hotel room, we've been priming him, programming his subconscious. He's been seeing the number 55 all day long, on the elevator, in the lobby, even the stick pin on the doormat. Not only that, we loaded his route from the hotel to the stadium. He looks out the window, primers are everywhere. Now he doesn't see it, but he does. There's no getting around it. He even sees far. Suggestions are everywhere. From the number of flowers in a vase to the tramp stamp on the hooker we sent to his room last night. Oh, that is genius. Yeah, and it's not only what he sees, it's what he hears. The Mandarin word for five is Wu. There are 124 woo-woos in sympathy for the devil. Now he's not registering it, but it's all there. So when he picks up those binoculars, looks out on the field, sees a familiar face with the number 55 on his jersey, some little voice in the back of his mind says, that's it. And he thinks it's intuition, and he picks. Do you want me to write it down? And you, being in the dark, was the convincer. We call that the little blind mouse. I'm the blind mouse? You're such awesome. You can't tell me that's 100% real. Well, it's probabilistic. Uh, Farhad has it at about 59%, but it's better than Vegas. And what if he picked wrong? Double it till it happens. 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 <laughs> It's quite apparent Abu has learned a lot from this street hustle and decided to inject it in the discussion about the pews of Savannah. Actually, it was never a discussion because Abu initially made it clear that he did not want to have a discussion with me but would rather communicate through Facebook group posts. Likewise, this so-called faithful to a God, Mike Pereira, made it clear to me that he'd rather do what I call battle videos. As you see on their channel, I challenged the entire group by myself and the offer still stands and none of them accepted my challenge. But instead, these cowards decided to stick their chests out afterwards among themselves. Let me show you or better yet, listen to Abu's Ace of Diamonds. The second image I attached to, which I attached to each email was this one, which is the same pew, just with some highlights added to guide the eyes, so to speak. 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 The second image I attached was this one. The same pew, just with some highlights added to guide the eyes, so to speak. Simple question, why did he feel the need to, in his own words, guide the eyes of the professors he sent the images to? If he's so confident in his wild assertions that there's Quran passages written on the pews, why did he feel the need to send a superimposed image to the professors? In the legal realm, what Abu did is called leading the witnesses. In order to make his trick work, first he had to completely discredit the sources introduced by Pastor William Brown. Secondly, to get onlookers to question the credibility of Pastor William Brown and ultimately my credibility. By doing this, it completely removes the focus from his Ace of Diamonds. The second image I attached 
to e which I attached to each email was this one, which is the same pew, just with some highlights added to guide the eyes, so to speak. 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 Which is, not only did he guide the eyes of the professors with the two images he sent, he also felt the need to make references to Arabic sources in the footnotes of his email. Yes, he added footnotes to his email. I can say emphatically, the pew in question is not Arabic. 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 So when he picks up those binoculars, looks out on the field, sees a familiar face with the number 55 on his jersey, some little voice in the back of his mind says, that's it. And he thinks it's intuition, and he picks. Do you want me to write it down? And you, being in the dark, was the convincer. We call that the little blind mouse. I'm the blind mouse? I'm the blind mouse? I'm the blind mouse? The movie clip I used is from the movie Focus, starring Will Smith. Like the name in the movie, I am asking you all to focus as I explain the craftiness of the Roman Catholic Abdel Masi Amanatani. I'm going to do a simple analysis on the email he sent to all the professors. What I am about to share with you is in no way an attempt to discredit any of the professors. However, I want to show you that regardless of your level of achievements in academia, you can still be fooled, you can still be misled. Every Negro that is the son or daughter of slaves should have no problem with understanding this. It was the so-called scholars of the 18th and 19th century who labeled our community beasts, barbarians, uncivilized, and less than human. Am I saying that the professor's assessment on the pews in question wrong? I am saying emphatically, yes, it's wrong. In the movie clip I shared, Will Smith's character revealed how he manipulated the surrounding of the gambler, the target. He was asked the following questions. How did you know he was going to pick? His response, we told him to. We've been telling him all day. From the moment the gambler left his hotel room, we've been programming his subconscious. He's been seeing the number 55 all day long. He looks out the window. Primers are everywhere. Now, he doesn't see it, but he does. There's no getting around it. Likewise, the Roman Catholic Abdel Masi Amanhattani took the same approach. The second image I attached to e which I attached to each email was this one, which is the same pew, just with some highlights added to guide the eyes, so to speak. 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 Mm, it's a trip, but I ain't want to gossip. So if anyone asks you, you ain't heard it from me. 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 <laughs> The email sent to the professors is loaded with primers. Throughout the email he sent to the professor and the attachments, the professor would subconsciously choose the number 55, in other words, make the conclusion of Arabic writing on the pews prior to actually viewing the images. In paragraph one of Abu's email, he made a distinction between two groups, those who say the writings on the pews is Hebrew and the other group who says it's Arabic. Line four says, but the person who made that suggestion is not any sort of expert in Quranic Arabic. At the end of the sentence, he included the reference listed in the footnotes. This does not seem like a big deal, but let's take the layers off. Like the example in the movie clip, the professors are the target and you the viewers, you you are the blind mice. Paragraph two, line two, the third sentence says, the second image shows the same pew with highlights as part of one person's attempt to elucidate what might be there. In the same sentence in the parentheses says, and the second image is in a different color because one person suggested it might be the end of a different sentence. This is where the manipulation kicks in. The Roman Catholic Abdel Masi Amanhattani 
made it a point to use generic phrases such as one person. This will mislead any onlooker, including professors, into thinking that this was a group effort, misleading the professors to thinking that there is multiple people within the Arabic group providing inputs and this information provided is based on the people in that group. Lastly, the footnotes. The Roman Catholic Abdel Masih Manhattani made it a point to add additional primers in an attempt to seal the deal with the professor's assessment. In the footnote, he included the link of the First African Baptist Church and the Arabic reference on the site. He also included the link and information about slaves in America, was able to write portions of the Quran he pushed in his earlier videos he made about the pews. The second image I attached to, which I attached to each email was this one, which is the same pew, just with some highlights added to guide the eyes, so to speak, to guide the eyes, so to speak, to guide the eyes, so to speak, to guide the eyes, so to speak. backed away from the term urban apologetics when I saw how they were doing moderate or who I would call Israel that believed on the law 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 everybody sneak around like I told y'all a long time ago urban apologists everybody they do like your baby mama they do like they come around in a different screen name like a stalker they coming around in the different name in the different name in the different name in the different name I got a thousand dollars of Israelite money I'm gonna put up put up Now again, I want to make this clear. You've been had. You've been hustled. If he was truly seeking an honest assessment on the pews in question, he would have simply sent an image without any superimposed markings. He would not have made any Arabic references, but simply allowed the professor to make an honest assessment. What we did was send emails to over 20 professors who specializes in the Near East languages. Also, we sent an image of the pew in question minus any added mark. We also made it a point not to include any third-party references to Arabic, Hebrew, or any other languages such as the church website. We received responses from over 10 professors who emphatically stated that the writings on the pews is not Arabic. But we did not stop there. We then sent them a follow-up email with the superimposed image Abu created and their responses were the same. A couple of them took it a step further further by questioning the motives of the person who added the superimposed markings. Unfortunately, due to the foolishness of how the previous professors were treated, I am only including their first name, their response, and their area of expertise. I'm just going to highlight a couple. This is a quote from Ian, who is an associate professor of Arabic and comparative literature. It's not Arabic, if that's what you're asking. It vaguely resembles Arabic, but it's clearly not. This is the quote from Professor Shaw from the Department of Islamic Studies. The letters look like a sequence of signs resembling a Hebrew cursive script. I want to make this clear. Arabic is a cursive language. It is not written the same way as cursive Hebrew. In every form of Arabic script, the letters are connected. That's Arabic 101. Notice how the Roman Catholic Abdel Masi Amanatani never gives an actual letter by letter breakdown as I did on the pews in question. Instead, he makes an assertive effort to show visual comparisons of writings of Arabic calligraphy. You will not find a single video of anyone in this UA group giving a letter by letter transliteration of the pew in question as I did. What he and faithful to a God purposely 
Kelly did in a video titled Kelly Richardson Debunk Arabic Revisited, they purposely did not include my letter for letter transliteration of the pew in question. Here's the unedited transliteration I did on the middle portion of the pew. I want to make this clear. Professor David Bunis does not support nor endorse what I am going to share with you. However, his work does. I'm going to use his presentation and guide on Solar Trio to show his teachings support my conclusion. Let's start with the very first letter. I can say with absolute confidence that this letter is called in the Israeli language, the Yod, and in the ancient Hebrew, the Yad. This letter means hand, outstretched arms, salvation. This letter makes the short I sound as in sit or short E sound as in Purim. Let's listen to Professor Bunis as he teaches how this letter is written. The Yod is basically a dot, so that would come out like this, that's Yod. The Yod is basically a dot, so that would come out like this, that's Yod. The next letter is the Zion or Zion. This letter means weapon. Let's listen to Professor Bunis as he teaches how this letter is written. The letter Zion is written this way. And again, it's a letter which takes the rafe or varika, giving us the sound j. The next letter is the resh or raash. This letter means head protocol. Listen to Professor Bunis as he teaches how this letter is written. The letter resh takes this form in square. And um, in Judaism, it tends to be a, a tall letter. So it's either written above the other letters this way, and it often has a loop on top. I already covered the yod, but I want to briefly touch on the two yods side by side. To the right on your screen is called the Saray and the Saray yod. Both Masoretic points or marks makes the A or long A sound. In Solar Trio, the Vresh followed by the two yods would be pronounced re. What's also interesting is that in German, the two dots over a letter is called an umlaut, which makes the same A sound. Lastly is the lamed or lamad. This letter means staff, teach, disciple. Let's listen to Professor Bunis as he teaches how this letter is written. Listen and watch carefully. Letter Lamed, which is written this way in square, takes several forms in Judesmo and Soletreo. Uh, up until around the end of the 19th century, it tended to be written this way. And then from that, then on, the predominant forms are this form in Turkey, this form in Salonika, and additional forms like this in other parts of the Judaism speaking world. This is the published reference I use that is written by Professor Bunis title, A Guide to Reading and Writing Judaism. Let's bring this together, starting with the first two letters. Together they are pronounced yiz or is. Another point I want to make that it is not uncommon to see the Zion used interchangeably with the scene. Let's go to the next syllable, which is pronounced re. Lastly, let's add the last syllable, il. Altogether, they are pronounced yiz, re, il, or is, re, il, is, re, il, is, re, il, is, re, il, is, re, il. Is, re, il.
Lastly, I want to further show you how deceptive this entire group operates in. Here's the video clip of the racist Vocab Malone, aka John Mark Reiser, the Roman Catholic, Abdel Masi, Aman Hatani, and Mike Pereira, aka Faithful to a God, call themselves questioning my approach to the pews, mocking and insulting my intellects. This video was made two years ago, but notice what I say about seeing cursive Hebrew and Ge'ez on the pews, which was also confirmed by an actual Harvard professor. This source actually came from their group as they attempted to debunk my efforts. All right, so the language Ga'az, right, which they call Ge'ez, is a, uh, a, a Shemitic language, right? And when you look at Ge'ez and you go to those pews, you will see a combination of Ge'ez uh, for some of the letters as well as uh, cursive Hebrew. You'll see that right there on the pews. And I brought it to the attention of the people down there, down there, down there, down there. As for the Ge'ez script, here's a quick analogy. This is from the website AmharicQuran.com. Uh, this sentence right here is Amharic. However, this sentence, on the other hand, is Arabic. It's written in the Ge'ez script, but it is Arabic. Therefore, assuming for the sake of hypothetical argument that there is coherent language in the pews, Pastor Richardson's reasoning that the text cannot be Arabic because some of the markings vaguely resemble Hebrew or Ge'ez characters is, it's a bad argument. And by the way, as was shown in my video on the church's sanctuary, all sorts of things can resemble Hebrew or Ge'ez characters, including markings in which neither Hebrew nor Ge'ez nor any other Semitic language is actually present. Actually present. Actually present. Actually present. The point of that thought experiment was to show that Kelly Richardson's methodology can easily produce false positives. So this is um Eve, Dr. Ephraim Isaac. You could look him up on just Google him just to know who, who we we're talking about before I show the documentary, right? He's a brother that was born in Ethiopia. He's an Ethiopian American. He went to Harvard University. He's a scholar of ancient Semitic languages and civilization and African slash Ethiopian languages and religion. He is the director of the Institute of Semitic Studies at Princeton, New, in Princeton, New Jersey, and the chair of the board of the Ethiopian Peace and Development Center. Mm. Dr. Isaac, listen to what he holds now. He holds a bachelor's in divinity from Harvard Divinity, a PhD in Near Eastern languages. Let me That's say it okay. again. That's right up his alley. That's right up his a alley. PhD. That's his lane. There you go. Many of them look alike. Ha, sa, ra, ri. So all these letters are Ethiopian. Yeah, that is Ethiopian. Ha, this is sa. Yeah. And this would be na if it was straight like this. There is now evidence to clearly show that some of the slaves came with skills of writing which transcends the traditional model of illiteracy, albeit most were illiterate. In fact, most people from Europe and the West were illiterate. In 1733, uh, my fifth-grade grandfather, Turn it up a little bit. Jewish immigrant, uh, Frankfurt von Oder, uh, came across to America on a ship with about 40 other Jewish uh, immigrants uh, to Savannah. At the time, uh, Savannah was a bit of a wilderness. The uh, Jewish uh, uh, immigrants uh, who arrived there were actually uh, trying to reach uh, Charleston. In terms of just Savannah in general, those Jewish immigrants settled there, arrived there in 1733. So that's 120 years of Jewish presence with African presence in a uh, place by the Civil War, which had something uh, like 15,000 people as its population. The Jews who came to America, while they certainly wanted to retain their religious identity, also, certainly in terms of their not livelihood, I mean, they, they, they did want to acculturate to their surroundings. You're talking about a close-knit community 
where all strata of light interacted and uh, overlaid uh, and, and, and intertwined. The diverse community in Savannah provided a unique situation where black slaves and Jews were living side by side. Could this be a possible explanation for what we see on the side of the pews? Are there actually Hebrew letters mixed in with the Ethiopian letters? Well, then that would look like a Christian child. As it is, that's right. as, it, as it is, it, it also, I have to see this closer up, but it also looks like a closer. Mm -hmm. Okay, however, however, nothing else on this yeah. panel really looks like a Hebrew. When you have something that, that looks like a Hebrew letter, it's in a context of things that don't look like yeah. Hebrew letters. Mm -hmm. So that the, the, the issue, is, again, the issue is not the individual sign, it's, it's what the signs are up to. So far, none of the letters, symbols, or markings seem to form words, which may imply that they had a different purpose entirely. Symbols in magic is very well known, very ancient. In Ethiopia, for instance, already in the 14th century, they were using decorative letters, not directly in terms of symbolically or for words, uh, letters, but in terms of uh, archipometric figures. A lot of them, early magic, what we call abracadabra, uh, they are not complete words. But they are letters. The one prayer that the Ahida Shara, Ahida Shara, Ahida Shara, Ahida. I mean, just they use just a few of those words. And sometimes it could maybe just like ha 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 la 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 ba 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 This is, of course, the way of enticing the demon and, uh, and defeat them. backed away from the term urban apologetics when I saw how they were doing moderate or who I would call Israel that believed on the law, that believed on the law, that believed on the law, that believed on the law. It's everybody sneak around. Like I told y'all a long time ago, urban apologists, everybody. They do like your baby mama. They do like they come around in a different screen name, like a stalker. They coming around in the different name, in the different name, in the different name, in the different name. I got a thousand dollars of Israelite money I'm going to put up, put up. Dante, I want to debate you live on the 400 years. I got a thousand dollars of Israelite money I'm gonna put up. But we have some people out here that are, they're getting finances from different people so they can say certain things and they get the green light that people are like, all right, we understand that there's a, something happening in the African American community. It's okay if you say Jesus ain't right. So they'll say that, but they're not gonna go any further. It's a trip, but I ain't want to gossip. So if anyone asks you, you ain't heard it from me. 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 <laughs> Here's some bonus information. Here's a source that would assist you, Mike Pereira, AKA faithful to a God, and your efforts to debunk the existence of black Jews in Savannah. I hope this helps. This is coming from the memoir of General James Oglethorpe, the founder of Georgia in America, 1867, page 122. General James Oglethorpe is a Jew who came to the Georgia territories with 47 Jews and 37 of them were Sephardic Jews. It says, Next day, Oglethorpe divided the men and boys into parties, one to cut forks, poles, and laths for making more bowers, another to set them up, a third to fetch palmetto leaves, a fourth to thatch, and a Jew workman bred in the Brazils, who had come from Savannah, taught them to perform all this nimbly and neatly. Show one piece of reference that shows Ashkenazis or should I say white Jews enslaved. Show me one reference that says white Jews were bred in Brazil. Show me one reference that uses the term bread with the Jewish community as you understand them to be. To be, to be, to be. Oh, oh, you got it. Look, there goes Miss Jenkins right there. Mm -hmm. That's good old Mr. Jenkins, honey. I dare somebody say something bad about Mr. Jenkins. <laughs> Don't nobody be 
to say nothing bad about Miss Jenkins because I'll go crazy. That, that's when I'll lose it. Miss <laughs> Jenkins is a sterling example of a human being. Mm, 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 mm. Hey, Miss Jenkins. <laughs> she is something else, honey. Just don't let her take her shoes off in your apartment. Feet smell like a dill pickle. <laughs> Yeah, there's some nice people in this neighborhood. There's some fine folks. You're gonna like it just fine. You just do me a favor. You stay away from nosy gossiping hens and you be okay. All right, I got to go now. Home Shop Club's coming on. Gets the yet unheard of Zorro Snap in Z Formation. I tell you what the country wants. Stop messing with the blacks and give us a break on tech. Stop hogging up all the wealth and give us a cut on town. Stop flying all around and keep your hell down. If you don't like that, you can kiss my butt. It's a trip, but I ain't want to gossip. So if anyone asks you, you ain't heard it from me. 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 You ain't heard it from me.